Today it's time to drive the facelift of the Alfa Stelvio, Alfa's mid-size SUV with Thomas and Autogefühl in 4K full screen full length. Let's go here with the changes. For example, the headlamps have been changed, updated now, matrix LED and also a different design here in the daytime running light, one, two, three elements like we've seen with the smaller SUV, the Alfa Tonale. Then we have the typical Alfa front grille and everything designed in a rather black scheme. This is here the sporty Veloce version. Turning indicators, beautiful idea, look at that, in a cascading style and using these three elements. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? 4 meters 69 or 184 inches is the length here. We have 20 inch wheels mounted, overall from 19 to 21. And I really like this very unique Alpha design with the open holes here that looks really typical Alpha and quite stunning, doesn't it? Then the Veloce batching and the Alpha stereo already from the outside looks so sporty. To me, one of the most beautiful SUVs out there. And so we'll see what the interior and the driving part does here today. In the rear, they changed the lamps, so now less red, but more transparency right here in this area. But then again, the signature, the light signature is really beautiful and slim. Q4, by the way, legalizing the all-way drive. And in this trim here, we also have the black tips here around the exhaust pipes. It's quite powerful look, isn't it? Turning indicators in the rear, mm, not that spectacular like we've seen in the front. Key fob here. Looks good, but doesn't feel that much premium. The door closing sound, also not that good. So that could be a little bit better. Insert of the door, it's actually nice and clean design and everywhere we can see and feel, we have real buttons and so on. And the first interior overview, of course, the sporty steering wheel and the rear shifting levers here, really massive. They're fixed behind the steering wheel, also galvanized here. That is really cool. Seats, base versions in the UK and in Germany will also feature fabric on the inside. Higher trims like the Veloce here and also all US trims only feature animal skin. And the surface here is really stiff, so not the best comfort from the seats. However, they hold you quite well, quite tight in corners. Then with 189 or 6 foot 2 still leaves a lot of headroom and a steering wheel here with the manual control. And yeah, doesn't feel too good. So yes, we know the Alphas look awesome on the exterior, but some things as for the build quality on the interior are, let's say, only mediocre. Interior cockpit overview, really clean and beautiful layout. And what I appreciate is real buttons. Start, stop at the steering wheel, here for the cruise control and so on, left side, right side for the volume, for example. And on the middle part, lower here, climate unit, and strength, seat heating, heated steering wheel, everything straightforward as for the user interface. Love the classic Alfa Romeo design of the instruments, how they are put in there like goggles, you know, like right and left really enclosed. Ditch instruments here with a greeting screen that looks pretty amazing already. When you start up the vehicle, here the 12.3 inch instruments new with the facelift are being activated. This is the retro look. And in the retro look, by the way, you can see here 20 and 40 are turned in the opposite direction. And that is a citation of past Alpha models. Other than that, you can also switch to a more modern look. And listen to the turning indicators. Definitely retro sound design. The first time I heard that, I was like, okay, would you appreciate it? Or would you say like, ah, I don't want that sound in my vehicle. But then when you think about like vintage models, then you know, it grows on you. Infotainment 8.8 .8 inch is super, super slow indeed. So yeah, to offer that in nowadays cars with a facelift, I don't know, even Apple CarPlay in an auto is kind of slow, but most of the time you will use it in this very mode then because the car internal system is really not up to date and here also the rear view camera and so on so they shouldn't do it in a 2023 2024 car middle console here in the front part here has a usb a charger but that's only for charging then slide this one open adaptive cup holders i'm glad that we still have a real shifting stick here that's actually quite cool fits to the sporty vehicle drive mode selector and volume control for example for the passenger and this here, this device can control the infotainment system while driving. Glad to still have that. 
under the armrest, cable connections for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, some space and also inductive charging. Facelift news, USB-C charger now, at least one in the rear next to USB-A. And the rear seating area, you can see it is kind of narrow. It's not the small TV, but you see when I'm driving, I can barely fit behind the driver's seat myself, so not too much rear leg. However, headroom here is absolutely fine. Trunk or boot area, 525 liters or 18 and a half cubic feet. Well usable, a meter 40 inches in width and also in the length. And we have this cover here, um, which is not the best I've seen. Let's take it that way. And then we fold the seats, but they don't fold directly. You have to push them. And then you have a flat loading area. Here, this could be done a little bit better, I think, build quality wise. As for the engines, pretty simple, a two liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine, 280 horsepower. In the US, you can also get the rear wheel drive version. Other than that, this all wheel drive version here. And then in some markets, you also get the 2.2 liter four cylinder diesel with 210 horsepower. Here, the acceleration figure for the turbo petrol engine, less than six seconds to one kilometer hour or 62 miles an hour. Definitely sufficient. And if you want even more power, there's also the quadrifolio version available. Consumption, you do have to calculate with some 10 liters on one kilometers, so like 23 mpg US, 28 mpg UK, quite thirsty. And the strange thing is, it kind of sounds like a diesel, this petrol engine. You hear what I mean? And you also kind of get that on the interior. Even some other customers, we have them here as viewers, confirmed that. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Alfa Stelvio facelift put to the dynamic mode and German Autobahn 100 km an hour, 60 miles an hour too. Let's see. 130, 50, 160. Yeah, that's actually quite decent. You feel that the engine is working really hard indeed. Of all the sound, we've discussed it with the Julia as well. In the, you know, you know, in the base RPM level, it sounds basically like a diesel. Here, of course, and not anymore. But it sounds also pretty thin on the interior, indeed. Here at higher speeds, here around 150 kilometers an hour, it's actually quite loud. So noise insulation, they are definitely behind the competition. And driving feeling-wise, set in the interior part. I would like to have the steering wheel a little bit closer towards me, but automatic transmission is working very well indeed, and you get a good feeling all over the vehicle. The, the steering is really precise and direct, and it feels super sporty. It doesn't feel like you would be handling a large SUV or something. And it's also do the lane changes here. Yeah, that's so much fun indeed. Back again. It, it immediately tells you actually, race me, you know, that's why people buy this vehicle. The same with the Julia, this platform here offers so much driving fun. And that is the moment where it kind of tries to make up for the flaws we mentioned earlier, also like on the interior and maybe infotainment and something, that you just start driving it and you just feel like, wow, this is so much fun. Assistant systems, I like how you can put in the speed here on the left side of steering wheel thumb and the feedback it gives you is really nice proper buttons to press not hashtag capacitive bs and so on and this now also features with this facelift here you can activate or deactivate easily an active lane keeping assist so the car is being centered in the lane actively and this works in a very smooth way indeed so really good upgrade as for the assistant systems you also have blind spot monitors for example but the good thing to me is really that you can always, by a press of a button at the steering wheel, deactivate the lane keeping assist and then you're you know, more free to steer once again. That's, I think, a very practical approach of all. Once again, higher speeds. It handles so well. Yes, the wind noise is quite notable, I have to say that. But the car overall stays really, really calm and collected and you feel very safe when controlling it. That's the thing, that this sporty behavior also feels to this you know, perceived safety in handling indeed. Of course, you should never exaggerate it or something, but it's really, it feels like nothing, you know, moving it at high speeds, 
it really fits to the German Autobahn where we can, at, at least in some parts, do these really high speeds indeed. And now we're back at like less than one kilometers an hour, less than 60 miles an hour. It feels like nothing. It feels like we would be standing still. We can also easily change back to the normal driving mode, like this DNA. Uh, we'll have this this scheme there, and then also the RPMs change a little bit. So in the dynamic mode, the gears are basically lower always. Always are gear lower, and then the RPMs turn up quicker, so you can better accelerate, have a little bit more fun as for that aspect. The turning indicators, by the way, I'm not sure how you can hear that, but I, yeah. I, already mentioned in the interior review uh, they just sound kind of weird um, I can just you know, only imagine that it's this retro approach approach for that as well you know accelerating out wow beautiful that is awesome really really nice so much fun to turn it around here changing the autobahn then here from one to another and you can see how quickly I approach the other vehicle and you really forget that you're driving an SUV that's the cool thing about the Stelvio. It really delivers you the driving fun of a sport. It's done, always reminding us of the Julia platform. All we drive still has a rebel bias, good acceleration out. And once again, we're up to speed, blocked here. It's really beautiful in the acceleration. Wow, really, really cool. So you can get it also as a rebel drive on the US market, but when you have the all wheel drive version, then you still remain, we you know, with this rear-wheel bias that you still can get out of the corners in a really nice way. Seats, by the way, are not the most comfortable, as we said earlier, but they hold you pretty tight here when you're doing lane change and in the corners and so on. So that's the good aspect about it. The base fabric seats that you can get in some countries will deliver more comfort because they're just softer in the surface material. So that is a thing to get more comfort. Other than that, here at the moment, 20 inch wheels mounted and the suspension is set on a quite stiff note. So if you want more comfort, then I can recommend to go for the smaller wheels, actually, depending on the version you pick. Of course, the stiff suspension delivers me a nice sporty feeling. Here I can also use the manual shifting pedal. So for example, shift down, accelerate out, use them again, wow, bang, bang. And then you really hear and feel the gears are being set in. So this also attributes to this driving fun. You can make it even more fun with these fixed pedals here at the steering wheel. Wow, that's so much fun. It really gives you some kind of Ferrari vibes even. And you can also use the big shifting lever in the middle in this manual mode to shift up or down. Yeah, but I mean, when you have these shifting pedals, click, 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 yeah, then you, you basically gotta use them, right? <laughs>